So our next presentation is going to be presented by um, Brenda Rose. She's a pharmacist, a PharmD, and she works in the office of the commissioner. And she came all the way from uh, another building from the office of the commissioner to give this presentation. She will be speaking about FDA's MedWatch system. Uh, Brenda? Thank you, Shirley. Hello, and if you're still with, with us, thank you. Um, as Shirley said, I'm going to talk today about our MedWatch program, FDA's Medical Product Safety Program. So what exactly is MedWatch? MedWatch was established in 1993 by Commissioner Dr. David Kessler. At that time, he stated, our goal in introducing MedWatch is to underscore the responsibility of providers to identify and report adverse events that may be related to FDA-regulated products. Reports help FDA and manufacturers recognize product risk and find ways to prevent and manage those risks. When we began almost 20 years ago, the focus of the program was primarily about reporting in. We are now also focused on safety out, that is, reporting safety information out to you. Today, once we identify new safety information about a medical product, we send this information to you. Our goal is to deliver this information in a useful format and at the point of care so that it can be incorporated into decisions about the use of a particular medical product taking into account the specific risks and benefits. So why is post-marketing adverse event monitoring even necessary? Unfortunately, it is impossible to have complete information about the safety of a product at the time of approval. Despite the rigorous steps in the process of drug development, there are limitations. This is because clinical testing is generally conducted with selected patients, for example, patients with complicated medical conditions and those who are taking other medications may be excluded. Clinical studies seldom have more than 3,000 patients. And finally, the trials are brief. They often last no longer than weeks or months, making it difficult to identify reactions, side effects due to long-term use. Therefore, the true picture of a product safety actually evolves over the months and even years that make up a product's lifetime in the marketplace. MedWatch ensures that there is a mechanism to capture information about problems that emerge and to alert you of these problems. To carry out its responsibilities, the FDA needs to be informed when a serious problem with a medical product is suspected or identified in clinical use. To implement these provisions for reporting on human medical products during their marketed lifetimes, FDA Form 3500 is used for voluntary reporting. Anyone can report a serious problem as a result of a drug or other medical product. We receive reports across the country from healthcare professionals such as nurses, doctors, dietitians, and also consumers, patients, and caregivers. In addition to voluntary reporting, there is mandatory reporting. Form 3500A is used for mandatory reporting, meaning that it's required by law or regulation. Manufacturers who receive a report must submit it to FDA. Healthcare facilities also must file reports of death and serious injuries. I'd like to emphasize that one person can make a difference. Even a single report from an individual can become a signal and lead to a label change or other FDA action. I'm going to talk about an example of a single report that was made in 2004 about a 34-year-old woman with multiple sclerosis. She developed cardiogenic shock. Her heart was damaged, making it difficult to supply enough blood to the organs of the body after being treated with a particular drug. She ended up needing a heart transplant. This was a single voluntary MedWatch report received by FDA. One of our safety evaluators reviewed it and pursued further evaluation of ongoing data in a phase four study, which is a study done after the drug was approved. 
Findings of the study showed additional patients who had a decline in the amount of blood being pumped out of the left ventricle, potentially leading to damage to the heart. The review resulted in a MedWatch alert and revisions to the box warning and the package insert. The warning now includes new monitoring recommendations for physicians who prescribe the drug. So how do you report to MedWatch? You provide information about your experience on a MedWatch form. There are two primary ways to access and use the form. Our online system walks you through the form step by step. You can also print out the form, complete it, and mail it or fax it back to us. The form asks you to describe the problem that occurred and walks you through several questions about the product in order for FDA to get an accurate picture of the problem. I want to emphasize how important it is to be as detailed and accurate as possible when filling out the form. So what exactly should you report? We are asking you to report any serious event that occurred as a result of taking or using a medical product. By event, we mean something that resulted in death, was life-threatening, caused permanent disability, required hospitalization, or required some kind of help to prevent permanent harm. It's important to understand that if you think it's serious, we want to know about it. These serious events can be caused by drugs. This could be both prescription or those that are available over the counter, medical devices, including any health-related kit or piece of equipment. Examples include any kind of implant, such as a pacemaker or stent, a glucose test kit, infusion pumps. Biologics, these are products such as blood components, human cells and tissues. Combination products, such as a combination of a drug device, for example, an asthma inhaler is a combination product. Dietary supplements, which you just heard about, infant formulas and medical foods, and also cosmetics. Before we move on to describe what happens to your report, I'd like to mention that in September of last year, a proposed consumer MedWatch reporting form was published in the Federal Register. Currently, um, non-healthcare professionals submit the voluntary reports using the Form 3500, which I've just talked about. We received feedback from the public and recognize that the form is written and formatted at a literacy level that exceeds the level recommended for the general public by health literacy experts. The proposed consumer MedWatch form evolved from several iterations of draft versions with input from consumer advocacy groups and the general public. We are now awaiting approval from the Office of Management and Budget, but hope to have this form available at the end of this year. So I've explained what to report and how to report, but what actually happens to your report once it's been submitted? And how do these reports end up resulting in the FDA alerts? When you report a serious problem you think was caused by a medical product, it is captured in a database so that it's available for review and comparison to other reports. An FDA safety evaluator reviews the report and looks for similar reports in the FDA database, in the scientific literature, and in sources from other regulatory agencies. The safety evaluator then develops what's called a case series. Interpretation of post-marketing safety data is complex involving analysis of post-approval clinical data, detailed review of adverse drug experience reports, estimates of drug usage, and other relevant information. On those cases requiring investigation, FDA or the manufacturer may conduct further epidemiological studies or post-market clinical trials. Once your voluntary report is evaluated, if FDA finds that it re represents a new safety issue, the agency has a variety of tools to use in the effort to keep effective products on the market while reducing the risk of harm to patients. 
In most cases, FDA will choose to make labeling changes and enhance education about how to safely use the product. But some of the tools we have, FDA can issue a safety alert advising the public and healthcare professionals to monitor a product's use, adjust the way it's used, or stop using it. We can update the product label, that's the insert that comes with the medication, to reflect new warnings. We can require the product to have a medication guide, which is a consumer-friendly instruction sheet provided to patients each time they fill a prescription to help them use the drug safely. We can request a change in the product's design, manufacturing process, packaging, and finally, we can request a company to recall a product. Here's an example of a product recall. Simply Thick is a brand of thickening agent to help manage swallowing difficulties. Simply Thick voluntarily recalled its product manufactured at its Georgia plant last year. The thickening agent is added to breast milk and infant's formula to help premature babies swallow their food and keep it down. FDA was alerted by two reports in the MedWatch Adverse Event Reporting System that the product may cause necrotizing enterocolitis, or NEC, a life-threatening condition. Staff followed up with the physicians who filed those reports and subsequently with a network of other neonatologists. At this time, there's not a confirmed link between the product and NEC and premature infants, although FDA and the CDC are actively investigating. Once FDA has taken action, it is important to get the information out to you so that you can make informed decisions about your health. There are a variety of ways you can have FDA deliver alert information to you. You can subscribe to receive email alerts, text alerts, Twitter posts, and RSS feeds. The FDA MedWatch website offers, offers visitors two types of medical product safety information. Individual safety alerts offer important information related to drugs, devices, or other medical products. The alerts briefly describe the issue, offer background information, and list FDA's recommendations. When an alert is posted on the website, notification is sent to all those who have signed up to receive the alerts as I just described, email, text, Twitter, RSS feeds. The second type of safety information on the MedWatch website is a chart of monthly safety labeling changes for drug products. The chart offers a quick scan of drugs and the labeling changes that have occurred. I mentioned previously a database that captures the adverse event reports. This database is called AIRS, or the Adverse Event Reporting System. The chart here shows the number of reports in the database from healthcare providers and consumers. You can see the reporting has steadily grown. In 2000, we received about 144,000 reports from consumers and healthcare professionals. Contrast that with 2010, when FDA received over 800,000 MedWatch reports. I described how we are taking a more comprehensive approach to making information on potential drug risks available to the public earlier. Here you can see the volume of information that is sent out from MedWatch. The number of MedWatch alerts sent in 2011 was 136. In addition, there were over 500 safety labeling changes. Many of these may have resulted from MedWatch reports. This concludes the presentation portion. I hope you've gained an understanding of the MedWatch program on how to report and receive timely safety information. Thank you very much, uh, Brenda Rose. And uh, on the slide before you is how to get in touch with MedWatch. And there's even an 800 number. Uh, so now we have, uh, we'll take some questions. Uh, the first question is, can MedWatch reports be viewed? Evidently, you know, are they online or something can be viewed? Um, a lot of the information is confidential, any patient identifier, et cetera. There are some zip files available, but they're not easy to manipulate. What you can do is submit a Freedom of Information request, and 
it will give you a lot for, say, you have, want to know all the adverse reactions between a certain period of time for a certain drug. It would give you a list of all those. Thank you. Uh, the other question is, this only applies to drugs that have been, I guess, approved by, F by the FDA, not the herbs or supplements that cause life-threatening illness to somebody. Is that correct? Dietary supplements are, can be reported on the MedWatch form as well. And, and in fact, I think they're encouraged to be yes. reported on the MedWatch form. Yes. So, so there you have your answer. And that seems to be all of the questions that we have for uh, this presentation. We thank you so much.